the, yeah, the gang's talking to the chef. He kind of just explains everything, uh, just a, a bout of ex, uh, blah, blah, ex, exposition. Exposition, that is the word. I was thinking exhibitionism, and that was not, definitely not the word. <laughs> that goes back to what Tony and Maria were doing in the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ho, oh, oh? Yeah. Ho, oh, oh, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. This is a Christmas episode coming at you. One of those sacred things. Yes, sacred in the TV lexicon sort of way. The holiday episode. This is Two Kill a Deli Birds, the Pokemon Rewatch anime podcast. These are not Christmas episodes we will be mm-hmm. doing. We will be looking at episodes 102, Wherefore Art Thou Pokemon? And episode 103, Get Along, Little Pokemon. I'm Graham. I'm the one who doesn't know a lot about Pokemon, but makes it up along the way. And to help me on this journey, we have a Pokemon expert, Kellen. Kellen, how you doing? I'm lovely. And yes, this is a holiday episode in name only. If Christmas didn't land on a Monday this year, uh, we would not even be mentioning it. But we're leaning into it. It's the holiday episode. Get festive, Kellen. <laughs> and if you're listening to this and you celebrate Christmas and you're listening on the day it releases, what the hell are you doing? Don't yeah, you have better on. things to do? <laughs> that's true. Maybe we should think about this as like people are listening to this on Boxing Day. Yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, I'd say normally like back in the day it'd be Boxing Day. You've got it on when you're like out in line freezing your took us mm-hmm. off to get a TV. But I feel like that's way less common these days, no? Yeah. Like actually going out there. Sales like Black Friday and Boxing Boxing Day sales are not what they used to be. They're more online and they're stretched out. Like it's not so and much. And they're also the bad. Board, the door buster. Now Black Friday CL sales are like, oh, you can get ten percent off if you order over a hundred dollars worth of merchandise. And it's like that's the that's not a sale. That's a fucking Tuesday. Yeah, it used to be like you'll get you can 10- get a TV for five dollars. <laughs> actually, they would actually have crap like that, but it would be like they had like two of them, and you had yeah. to be the first in line, and you, you actually had to kill had for a, it. You had to kill a man in cold blood in yeah. front of his children and like drink the blood to get it. That would be like part of the deal. Yeah, what happened to people dying on Black Friday? <laughs> the ritual sacrifice. <laughs> Free toaster oven for every human heart you bring in. <laughs> Those Sounds like were a good the deal days, to me. I don't know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I hope everybody is uh, having a good holiday, you know. But it, this time's tough for a lot of people, too. So I hope we'll we'll bring some laughs, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, how are your holidays going? Because we're definitely not uh, pre-recording this. No, we're definitely not. So yeah, uh, no, this I is like on the 24th. a lot of... Mm-hmm. Pickled fish and chocolate, not at the same time. Uh, what else do I normally do on Christmas? Anybody else eat pickled fish on Christmas? Shout no, you're out. the only one. <laughs> you're the only That's person. That's like a Scandinavian thing. I, I'm yeah. only distantly, but uh, no, I, I I have been uh, scarfing down my mother's shortbread cookies. Oh heck those yeah! Are, yeah, we got favorite. some baking going. Baking's yeah. all right. Do you have any like? gaming holiday traditions like a or like a memory of like crushing a game around christmas that you like to do a lot not really i i do make sure to turn on animal crossing on new year's eve but that's about it mm, gotcha yeah I've, i always liked kind of staying up late and, and putting on some music and and playing some games like I, I remember like pokemon snap like i didn't own it but you know you can sail the seas and whatever oh, well, on nintendo switch nintendo online i mean uh, <laughs> And like Golden Sun, shout out to Golden Sun, Game Boy Advance. Oh man, these aren't Christmas games, but for some reason they just fit because they're like cozy, you know? <laughs> I do remember uh, quite a few years ago, I guess at this point, I got some Nintendo eShop gift cards that I wanted for the 3DS because I wanted to get uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf because mm. I had been watching a, a content creator just playing a. Uh, Animal Crossing, and I was like, man, this looks like fun. I never really looked into Animal Crossing at all. And so I got the money, but uh, Christmas Day, the eShops are always, like, super busy, and oh, yeah. the downloading takes forever. It can take forever just to get into the eShop. And so I didn't get New Leaf downloaded until, like, 
midnight or one. And by that point, like everything in Animal Crossing is shut down. and You can't really do anything. So I remember being up at like seven in the morning, like waiting for my villagers to wake up so I could do things. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> that was a good morning. And you ended up liking the game. Were oh, you, I love Animal Crossing. Were you ever like, were you annoyed with it in that first little time? You're like, what the hell is this? Well, yes, but I knew it, I knew it was coming. Oh, but you I knew, knew how Animal you're Crossing getting. works. Yeah. Uh, I don't have gaming traditions, but my my tradition on Christmas morning is uh, watch the the Mr. Bean Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do know how much you love Mr. Bean. Yeah, it's fantastic. And that then I'm up it's Christmas Carol. Oh, that's, that's the so best good Christmas movie. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good Christmas movie. Yeah, I do like the Charlie Brown. One. That's a cliche, very cliche answer. But Boring. I like Charlie Brown. I think that the Charlie Brown humor Boring. is timeless. It's quaint and it's weird and it's, it's kind of good. depressing. <laughs> but if it's your favorite, that's so basic. Yeah, that is a basic joke. It is. It's but like, come on, take. when Snoopy on. dances on the piano, I'm here for it. Who isn't? I think the Halloween special, uh, Charlie Brown special is better because it has Snoopy pretending to be the World War One pilot. <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> every time he does it it's incredible i don't know when the last time i saw that one was oh it's good. or any of the non-christmas it's specials. on apple tv <laughs> oh, pff, fuck we're apple. just like a walking commercial some days Kevin. yeah well except for when i say fuck apple <laughs> i don't think they want that <laughs> probably not so oh, this was a sponsored segment oh darn yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit well something else sponsors wouldn't like is uh, mm -hmm. what I've got for you today. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, God is right. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So, uh, my Christmas a list. All right. Disclaimer. If you are sensitive to jokes about Christianity, skip ahead five minutes. Because we're getting into it. I was thinking about Christmas and the stories we were raised up. Me and Kellen were, were raised in a, a Christian households. So... The Christmas story, of course, was the whole thing. The baby Jesus in the stables, and, and then the wise men come, and they show up with uh, party favors. Gold, now, frankincense, myrrh, and I believe Netflix, the fourth one brought. <laughs> yeah, but it was like... It was like one of those screwy deals where like Jesus still has to pay ninety nine cents and then yeah. like hooked in <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Oh shit. You that, got me a that's recurring exactly credit card where I was thinking is is what else could have they brought? So these are the top ten things the three wise men could have brought to sweet baby Jay that Christmas night. Oh, big Jay, let's go. Yeah. All right. Number ten. A gift card to bed, Bethlehem, and beyond. <laughs> Bethlehem, fuck <laughs> off. You laugh. You laugh. When someone makes a cringe joke, it's the laughies who are at fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Bethlehem. Christ. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, number, yeah, yeah. number nine. A mattress. Our boy is in the stable. They were bringing gold, <laughs> frankincense, amber before they get him a freaking bed. Damn. Get him some, get him some memory foam. Get him a temper pita. Come on. <laughs> Our boy needs options. <laughs> he needs to be able to sit up. He needs to be able to lie down. He needs to be able to jump around and not spill his, the blood of Christ. I mean, the wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fun fact, uh, Joseph and Mary, when, when one of the wise men brought the mattress in, uh, they they weren't really grateful. They they were known to be pretty selfish people. They brought the mattress in and they just, they just looked at the wise men and thought, where's the fucking bed frame? <laughs> well, we're gonna put it on the ground like animals, yeah. <laughs> like animals? this donkey right here. <laughs> we don't. Do we live in a stable? <laughs> <laughs> wow, very, not very self aware. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number eight, a Game Boy with Pokemon Blue, but it's right before the re release of Yellow, so Jesus is low key kind of disappointed. <laughs> 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 like it's good, but like. He's like an anime oh, watcher, you know. He really yeah, wanted that he, Pikachu. He really wanted that clear Game Boy that you can like see into. Oh, but baby, he got, like, a blue one. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh, remember eh. the late '90s when like trans skins no. were were so hot? Oh, yeah, I do yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> You'll just have to trust me. They were they yeah. were a big trend. I know it was a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I grew up around '90s kids because I'm the youngest of four, so a lot of '90s stuff in the house. That's so true. All so right. true. Number seven. Number seven. One of those Hickory Farms cheese and meat baskets they sell at Ooh. the mall around Christmas. But you know what, Kelly? This is the first Christmas, so would they even exist? <laughs> so I, I really think that should go straight into number six, a time machine. 
We got to oh. get Baby J a time machine so we can go to the future and get one of those Hickory Farms cheese and meat baskets. And mm-hmm. if Hickory Farms is a Canada only thing and people are sitting there not knowing what I'm talking about, they're like these booths in the mall that sell like meat and cheese baskets. Okay, but you got to be very careful about the butterfly effect here. Because if you go forward in time to get him a meat and cheese platter basket and you bring it back to him, maybe Jesus eats the meat and cheese and he wants to become a butcher or a dairy farmer instead of the, the son of God, you know? Oh, he, he instead of healing people. switches yeah. gears. <laughs> yeah. He, instead Just... of being a carpenter and a miracle worker, he's a carpenter and a butcher. Oh. You gotta be careful about those things. Yeah, he might go straight into the whole sausage industry. Like mm-hmm. artisan hipster sausages. He's like yeah. putting mangoes in that those babies and things. And you're like, Cal- calm down, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was he was the original hipster. He rose from the dead before it was cool. Before zombies were a thing. <laughs> before zombies? He's the original yeah. zombie. <laughs> yeah. We all know that. Yeah, Number we five. all know that. Number five, another thing he's a little hipster-ish about, don't get him swim trunks. He can walk no. on water, so that'd be kind of insulting. <laughs> so I'm thinking like nice flip-flops. <laughs> Do you, you you think Jesus can't swim when he wants to? Like the walking no, on water, no, he's just, he, it's just, he he's can't just unable? can't touch the water. He's unable. <laughs> <laughs> the Poor baptism Jesus. story, th- that's a scab. Like the c- conspiracy theory. They could not get, when they got Jesus near the water, he like repelled it. Like a like a magnet. Okay, so then number four would be a bunch of deodorant then, because he can't shower, so he needs something. I people were mostly stinky back then. <laughs> yeah, but I'm yeah. sure some people were clean. Yeah, the rich who sucked. Yeah, exactly. I bet you it was actually cool to be stinky in olden days. <laughs> <laughs> number four. Number four. Tartar sauce. Our boy's got so much <laughs> bread and fish, it's the perfect compliment. What, oh, perfect. What do you get a man with all the fish in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Tartar sauce. <laughs> a nice dip. <laughs> all right. Number three, a Santa Claus ornament. He's got to learn about the competition. Who's vying, <laughs> <laughs> who's vying for ownership of this day? <laughs> it's you versus him, baby J. Huh? <laughs> Number two. Number two, diapers. He might be the son of God, but he's still a baby, for Christ's sake. He still shits himself. <laughs> he still poos. It smells. The donkeys avert their faces. <laughs> and number one. <sighs> a pneumatic nail remover. Oh, Happy Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> ah, move along. <laughs> Gross. That was bad. Ten through two, I was like, this is like the most inoffensive thing ever. Then you hit me with pneumatic nail remover. <laughs> I told you this was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even want to discuss it. I want to discuss Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. All right. Ah, uh, well, switching gears from oh. blasphemy and, and finding me a spot firmly in hell, we are going into episode 102, Wherefore Art Thou Pokemon? And then 103, Get Along Little Pokemon, which I am glad to tell you, Graham, these two title cards both use proper accents over the E. Which kind of confirms what you had going on mm-hmm. there, because like they had options. So how yeah. did that episode come up? For, okay, for people who are just tuning into this one, it, the episode is The Joy of Pokemon. Kellen has a TikTok and YouTube video explaining this, but there was a weird phenomenon with a slash instead of an accent in the title card. Mm-hmm. But they have uh, seemed to have rectified that <laughs> and, and used proper accents. Billy, <laughs> the slasher. So we'll uh, kick off Where Far Art Thou Pokemon, which is just the cutest episode. Yeah, it's cute. This is great. Also, I love it. It also just shits all over any chance of a, a coherent literary hour. Because it, it it itself is a literary yeah, hour. Yeah, it gives you the easiest literary you, hour you've had in a it's, year. It's either the easiest or the worst, because it's just yeah. like, it's done. Well, you can just do it in 20 seconds, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. So, we open the episode, uh, the narrator seems to claim that Ash had a, a big victory over Pokemon Master Prima last time, which is just a, a bold-faced lie. Really? That's what he claims? I kind of missed yeah. that. He's like, after after Ash had a triumphant victory over Pokemon Master Prima, and that's just I remember not getting what happened. <laughs> he got fucked up. <laughs> 
So uh, we're in we're in a village now. Some old old English village on the way to the next gym in Trovita. Yeah, it's clearly trying to make you think of Shakespearean times in yeah. architecture, but it mixes actually a few different eras of English architecture together. I read on Bulbapedia's claiming, anyways, specifically the Tudor area and the Georgian area are like merged together. I don't know what either of those are. So I mean neither. <laughs> But whoever caught that, that's that's <laughs> cool. You you should come on the podcast. You got a talent. <laughs> uh, but Ash wonders if they had Pokemon centers in in olden times, back, way back in the day. Oh yeah, and, big uh, Poke centers in olden times. There's a mention around here of Merry Old England again, mm-hmm. and even something about oh, this looks like it's from a history book. So history means fantasy here, right? We're yes. going to contort this to confirm our theory that England and uh, all of Europe is actually a fantasy realm in the Pokemon universe. Yes. Or is this or is the Pokemon universe so far in the future that original humanity was wiped out and now we're in the Pokemon world? Oh, it's one of those like Horizon mm. Zero Dawn things. Or where... Pikmin. Yeah, or Pikmin. Where there was yeah. like a fallout and now we're like in the new <laughs> new the realm new of world. humanity. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me it's not. We don't have any proof well, either way. Okay, there's those theories about there was like a great war, right? And it's like Yeah. Okay, what if well, like there was a war. What if the that. radiation uh like transformed animals? <laughs> <laughs> Also a possible theory. Yeah, I just want to find out the ones that, uh, because you can kind of see it that like, okay, a Pidgey, okay, that's just like a bird, but like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. But like, what about the, what about the ones that's like an apple pie? Like, did that, did that start as an apple pie that came to life? Or was this another creature like a dog that now is cursed (laughs) to look like an apple pie? Because that's dark and weird. The latter, obviously, of course. Obviously. So uh, then some young Victorian girl comes uh, running in. That's another for... era of, of, yeah. of England you just named. <laughs> she's she's coming in calling out for uh, Maria, who uh, is a Nidoran. And we get a, a cute little segment as she's describing Nidoran, like starts as just like a little blob. And then as she explains what their Nidoran looks like, it like adds the features and stuff. It's pretty cute. I liked it. It was very cute. Yeah. But blob and then kind of Mr. Potatoes heads into the Nidoran. Mm-hmm. So so Ash pulls out the decks, right? He's like yeah. hearing about Nidoran. He had seen Nidoran before, but always needs to check it. And and this is where Ash really has his uh, his misogyny glasses on, right? <laughs> he pulls up the male Nidoran. Yeah, how dare you, Ash? And she's like, No, mine's a female Nidoran. It's better. Uh, and Ash is like, I didn't know that there was a difference. Ash, they're two different Pokemon. Yeah, and like, this is straight this up. This is the only Pokemon, at least Gen One, that behaves like that, right? Where there's yes. like a male and a female variant, and they're just they're just different Pokemon, right? Yeah, gender in Gen One wasn't a thing except for the Nidorans. Yeah, which it accounted for it by having them not be the same Pokemon. Yes, I do think if if they made Nidoran today, like if they didn't have a, a gender Pokemon in Gen 1, if they made it in Gen 2 or whatever, it probably would have been one Nidoran, mm-hmm. and then it evolves into Nidorino or Nidorina based on gender, probably. Because they've done, have they done stuff like that? So- they've done stuff like that. I'm having trouble placing... Uh, Curlia can evolve into Gallade only if it's male. Snow Runt can evolve into Frostlass only if it's female. Huh. Um, and then there's a couple. Combi and Salandit can only evolve. There's if no way female. Salad It is a Pokemon. No, Salandit. Salad, salad it, everybody. Salad. Turn it into Salad. Salad. I'm refusing it. to learn. As in Salamander. <laughs> okay, Salandit. Salandit. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So yeah, Salandit and Combi can only evolve if they're ma- or if they're female, which is a pain in the ass because their gender ratio is only twelve point five percent of all Combi or Salandit are female. Huh. So it makes them really annoying to track down. Tricky. Anyway, that's uh, speaking of that's tracking Nidoran. things down. Uh, the gang agrees to help look for this Nidoran. She she explains that it's been running away a lot lately. And I'll come back in a bit. Uh, so the gang is is a uh, running around calling out for Maria, searching. Far and wide. Uh, and then we get my favorite Pikachu bit, I think, mm. ever in 100 episodes. He's calling out for Maria when he suddenly spots some uh, some pink fruit on mm-hmm. a tree. 
Amazed and then he kind of like eyes. looks around. <laughs> he looks around and he keeps yelling out for Maria. Except, I mean, he's Pikachu, so he's saying, Pika, Pika. And he's calling it very quietly as he sidesteps towards the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love just it. Just trails off. It, it's it's so a cool funny. animation. Like his eyes are just glimmering. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's so, is ah, Pikachu. I love him. So, uh, uh, so then some Victorian boy comes on in. He's looking for a Tony. How do you, how do you know these kids are Victorian? <laughs> oh, that's what I that was just what came to mind. Yeah, it's I don't think they actually are. <laughs> that's about, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so. No, I'm I'm cool with it. Let's let's roll with it. Yeah. So he's looking for a Tony, also an Iteran, but but this one's male, and, and we get the same forming animation. Starts as a blob, and then Mr. Potato heads into a a Nidoran. Yeah, and so we get a nice, uh, a lovely little Ash Moron moment here. Yep. Because he pulls up the decks and he pulls up female Nidoran and uh, the, the kid, uh, what's his name? Ralph? Or the girl's Emily. Uh, Ralph's like, that's not my Nidoran. My Nidoran's the male one. And like, as he was describing his Nidoran, he was like, it's a pinkish purple color, which Ash already saw on the Nidoran when he first pulled it up on the decks. Yeah, like, he just has such like... Um recency bias yeah right? he can only remember the most recent nidoran he has heard of yeah so what the hell is that about ash yeah I'm like get your shit together so the the two nidoran pikachu got his fruit for, though no that's what really counts yeah <laughs> uh the two nidorans that they're looking for they're named tony and maria did you catch this reference uh, is that the sopranos uh, uh there are definitely people named tony and maria on the sopranos <laughs> but that's just like New York Italians, like, come on! <laughs> no, What's the matter with no, you? they're they're the main characters of West Side Story, which ah. is which is an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. This might surprise you, but I have never seen West Side Story. I haven't either. I read that on Bulbapedia. Ah. Thanks for outing me. <laughs> yeah. I haven't either. That, that is Big probably fan. something I should see. Right? It's like noteworthy. It's like a I don't classic. Know. It's apparently. like a classic. It's like people like it. I don't know. So uh, Ralph notes that Tony's also been running away a lot lately. Ooh. Ooh, interesting. Coincidental. What a thing. And so uh, the kids see each other. Ralph and Emily like lock eyes and you're like, hey, fuck you. You oh. kidnapped by Nidoran. They are hurling insults and accusations. You stole Prepare my Nidoran, die. you piece of shit. You killed my father. Prepare to die. What you? What the? And then they duel. Yeah, they actually start hitting each other. <laughs> yeah. They, like, both pull out sticks and just start beating each other during this spat. <laughs> uh, but Meryl found something with her acute sense of hearing, and they, the kids race off to go find what Meryl found, and behind some bushes we see the most adorable thing. The two Nidoran are snuggling together. They're That's fucking... so cute! Now they're snuggling! <laughs> right, wholesome. We're back to wholesome. The, it's the, wholesome. The sacrilegious bits over. You're right, you're right. They sorry, did that sorry. before. This is the after coitus <laughs> The, the post-coital cuddles. Yeah. <laughs> of Tony and Maria. Yeah, <laughs> we just get the comment that they sure are friendly, but like they're clearly in love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Tracy sketches it. Oh, Tracy wants Tracy to does. draw them getting it on is what yeah. I wrote down. <laughs> that's Tracy being a creep again. Nidoran male picks a nose or uh, picks picks a nose picks a rose for Nidoran female. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is very cute. I'm How sorry romantic. to sully it. <laughs> <laughs> They're in love, and Misty's vibing with it. She points it out. She kind of gets it. The two kids, Ralph and Emily, totally obstinate. They pick up their respective Pokemon, and they're still on this like. That the other person sucks. And they're like, I my Nidoran's you. much yeah. too good for that loser's Nidoran. Yeah, I, I forbid you from ever seeing that Nidoran again. Oh, my God. And Ash, Ash with the brilliant detective line. I don't think they like each other. <laughs> That's Which brilliant. I'll give him a pass because I think it was obvious sarcasm. So. <laughs> okay, it counts if it's sarcasm. <laughs> Ash sometimes seems incapable of sarcasm, except if, if we pull the detective Misty. ball, though. Yeah, then it counts. Then it so. counts. So then we're at a restaurant. Okay, and the gang's more, eating. more on the nose humor. I love that this restaurant's name is Sandwich. It has a sign <laughs> that just says Sandwich. Sandwich. I would definitely, I would 100% eat at a place called Sandwich. What was that other store we, we joked about? His name was, it, the store's name was Bread, I think it was. Yeah, exactly. Just bread. Yeah. Okay, and, and leading on that, <gasps> I Maybe believe, they supply the bread to Sandwich. I think they do. You know why? Oh my God. Because we meet a chef right here uh, who looks like Mario. Uh, but who else he looks like? Great mustache. Like? 
the chef from bread. <laughs> oh, he, I think that there might be behind the scenes another Joy Jenny situation with chefs. That there is a clone of They're chefs throughout the land, and they all have really <laughs> on the nose restaurant names: bread, sandwich, cheese, soup, <laughs> pickle. It's the no name of restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go to bread, everybody. Oh, I had bread yesterday. I want to eat a rice. Nah, nah. I want. Ch- I want to go to chicken. <laughs> I'm all about potato these days. I only eat a potato. <laughs> So uh, at this restaurant, yeah, the gang's talking to the chef. He kind of just explains everything, uh, just a, a bout of ex- uh, blah, 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 ex- exposition. Exposition, that is the word. I was thinking exhibitionism, and that was not, definitely not the word. <laughs> that goes back to what Tony and Maria were doing in the bushes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, he, he explains that everybody, everybody knows Ralph and Maria. They've been competing with each other since they were toddlers, since they were able to catch Pokemon. They've always seemed to catch the same Pokemon, so they've always been kind of at odds with each other. The local Pokemon contest always seems to come down to them, and this year they tied for first place with their Nidoran. That wasn't good enough for them. They were very pissed off, but the Nidoran fell in love. It was love Ooh. at first sight for them, but the trainers are too stubborn to get along. The trainers are putting their long-standing family rivalry over the needs, wants, and real identity, over the love of their proverbial children. <laughs> Boy, where have I heard <laughs> do, this one do, before? Do we see what's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, leaving the restaurant, we see Tony. The little Nito ran male running down the alley. He calls for Maria to come out onto her balcony, and she does, and they talk to each other, sweet talk. It's adorable. Yeah, and this it's is where they just cute. they just literally reenact Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this episode for that because it, it reminds me of like there was kind of a thing with Saturday morning cartoons where they would kind of try to be like somewhat educational, like basically mm-hmm. drop you into a story. This is like the closest Pokemon gets to that. Gets to like yeah. the the Simpsons Hamlet episode, <laughs> that sort of except, thing. Except, spoiler alert, the Nidoran don't kill themselves at the end. Well, yeah, it does take a twist by not taking a twist, but yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think in Pokemon, them killing th- themselves would have been quite the twist. If these Nidoran, like, drank poison, <laughs> and then the yeah. one's like, oh my god, and then stabs himself? Like, yeah, that'd be exactly. Fucking wild. That would be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're sweet-talking Misty. Misty knows this because... She's a romantic, obviously. She knows all things of the heart and of love. Ash wouldn't get it, though. He's a baby. Big baby. Wah, oh. wah, wah. Oh, and Ash does like a classic depression animation yeah. here. He's like, I'm all grown up. <laughs> Beautiful. And so Emily throws a bucket of water on Tony. How dare you, Emily? <laughs> rude. And uh, takes rude. Maria inside. <laughs> Ralph takes Tony home. They're separated again. Oh. And well, this is where we learn Ralph and Emily are next door neighbors. Yeah, they've been right beside each other the whole time. <laughs> Misty won't have it, though. She's not going to stop until this matter is resolved. Those Nidoran belong together. And she's like, it's not really any of your business. She's like, I'll make it my business. Uh, Misty's on a, on a tirade for love this episode. And, and Tracy, if you're going to go on a tirade, that's a good one to go on. Tracy insists on filling that gap that Brock left of saying weird philosophical things that like didn't need to be pointed <laughs> out. He's like, you can live so close to each other and still worlds apart. <laughs> We're like, yeah, we, we get the metaphor. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Uh, but, uh, but Misty's like, love is the most important thing. We have to get these new to rent together. We need to make these trainers see, see this. And Ash is like, I didn't. I didn't know any love was uh, more important than catching Pokemon. And this and is Misty. where Misty insists again that he's a baby. He's a baby. Wah, 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 wah. wah. Here's your diapers. I took them for baby <laughs> Jesus. He had too many. <laughs> he was hoarding all the huggies. <laughs> but uh, Ash insists, despite his tendency to wear huggies when he goes out, mm-hmm. that he's not a baby, right, Pikachu? And Pikachu looks confused in a way... That I think he's just like, I don't really care what you're talking about. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ah, this is out of Pokemon realm. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Team Rocket are spying in, of course. Uh, every time the gang finds a Pokemon, Team Rocket looks in and they're like, oh my god, it's a rare Pokemon. How often Holy do shit. you think they're spying on them and, when there aren't Pokemon around? Like, yeah. how, how many hours <laughs> of uh, voyeurism do they have to sit through? 
I just want to know how many Pokemon they think are rare Pokemon. Because there's 151 in the original decks. I think they've probably called over half the decks rare by this point. I mean, Pikachu aren't that rare. They're kind of they, rare, but they're not that rare. Eh, they're kind of rare. They're kind of rare. You can only rare. find them in like yeah. two spots, and they're not very uh, common in those places. But Yeah, but where is one of those spots? Viridian Forest. Where is Team Rocket's headquarters? Saffron City. The other headquarters, where the boss Celadon lives. Celadon City. No, where the boss lives. Well, that's his gym. He doesn't live there. Yeah, he lives there. Where does the boss live? <laughs> I'm not going to give you the satisfaction ah! of that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> uh, also, I said Saffron thinking Silphco. They take over Silphco. That's not the, their main base. Uh, that's me being dumb. Oh, how dare I? Yeah, and I didn't care enough to refute that. I'm very smart. Thank you. Yeah, they're spying in. They're like, oh my god, a male Nidoran and a female perfect Nidoran. Set. It's a perfect set. It's a perfect stocking stuffer. It's a perfect <laughs> fucking salt and pepper shaker. I don't know. And Jesse's like, it's a booby trap. The booby prize. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like an animation here where Meowth imagines the Nidoran as like two sushis in a bento box. <laughs> which I didn't really get, but yeah. it's cute. <laughs> uh, so Misty is writing fake love letters to Ralph and Emily, pretending they're from each other, writing identical letters. Uh, Ash is concerned mainly about the mail fraud <laughs> situation. I, I thought that was a funny phrase that for was him good. to whip out. How does he know about mail fraud? He's 10. Uh, also, is that even the term? Like, you, you'd be like identity theft, right? <laughs> both. A little of both, I think. Like general mail each. fraud. That's an interesting yeah. term. A little but... slice of each, you know. But uh, Misty's really gone ends justify the means. She's thinking Machiavelli, and she's like, yeah, this is kind of shady, but they'll thank me later. They secretly like each other. Yeah, and they just won't admit it. Tracy's like, hmm, that's like you and Ash. And Misty and Ash uh -oh. explode. Uh-oh. <laughs> so back to Team Rocket. Jesse's plan is to convince the Nidoran that if they go with them, they'll be together forever. And so it's a, it'll be a painful lesson for the Pokemon because they'll get kidnapped and taken to the boss. Uh, then Jessie talks about her lifelong dream of, of having love. Ever since she was a child, she wanted love, but she's never found that person because she's mean and nasty and evil. <laughs> at least she's self-aware. All That's... in love's unfair, James says. And so at night, Meowth tries to coax the two Nidoran to go with him, but uh, they won't disobey their, their trainers. They're not going to go with Meowth. And so Jessie has a second plan. We're just going to fucking take them. <laughs> What good is a trick if it's not dirty, they say. Yeah. <laughs> true. I think true. Uh, Jesse screams, I can't believe they'd give up a chance to be stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the way they see the world is so interesting. <laughs> We'd give them such a good life, we would tell them, and then not actually give them such a good life. Why wouldn't they come with us? God. Sometimes I think that about pets, period. It's right? like, I love my pets, but like, imagine this scenario. I'm, like, living my life the way that I live it, and then I'm, like, caught by these, like, aliens, all right? And mm -hmm. the aliens, they just know way more about how the universe works than we in a way that our brains will never understand. So they justify holding me captive because they double my lifespan. I now live to 200 because they're advanced science. And they think that they're doing better for me because they're holding me in their house and, like, playing with me and feeding me and using the science on me and stuff. But I've been kept, I've been taken away from my natural state. Isn't that kind of depressing? <laughs> Give it a few thousand years and the humans will be domesticated. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. They'll evolve to fine. like it. Yeah. So the next day, the gang is the one spying in on something. They're spying in on the place Misty told Ralph and Emily to go meet in the letters. And the kids arrive and they're pissed. They're so mad. They're like, what is this joke? Like, they don't believe it at what all. What was this letter? <laughs> you think you're funny? You know I'm allergic to flowers. Because Misty sent Emily flowers and Ralph a model airplane. Ralph's like, you know I throw up on airplanes. <laughs> he is it's even better. I was like, what are the writers going to do to make Ralph mad at the <laughs> gift? He throws thought, up in airplanes. <laughs> my first thought was they were going to go dark with a, my dad died in a plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> so they duel again. Yeah, they just start wap, beating wap. each other up with sticks again. That's yep. their thing. And they brought their needle around with them in kennels just to tease them a little bit. And like, Ugh. you want to see, you want to see your little, your little love, your little love bug there? You'll never see. It. So a little empathy. Yeah, what, I want you to stare at him three feet away. You'll never, you'll never get that. And Misty realizes, okay, maybe they 
don't like each other. <laughs> she admits she's wrong, which was good. Yeah. <laughs> she's well, like, she was yeah, like, I'm wrong. she was like, I said I'd bring them together, and <laughs> technically, I did that. Well, so technically. Uh, when suddenly down the trail come a beautiful bride and groom who just got married. These oh, are two beautiful. very real people. Two very real people. Yep. Uh, not a fake wedding at all. Not nope. at all Team Rocket. Definitely uh, not James not, in the wedding not dress. Not at all gender swapping <laughs> <laughs> again, which is so good when they do this. It's, it's so funny, not because of like, haha, James is in a dress, but because of lo- just the logistics behind it. Because James has to put on this high pitched voice now when they could just have Jesse talking in her voice. It's her also, it's also voice. great how much they own it, right? Yeah, they like, commit to the Like, bit. James kills being in a dress, and yeah. Jesse looks so good in suits that you're <laughs> like, I kind of cheer for them when they do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yes, this makes sense. And so they grab Tony and Maria. They're like, this wedding was a sham. <gasps> it's Team Rocket. Holy shit. And they have like a little poem here. So they, they when they're revealing, they go, on this, our sunny wedding day, there's a funny trick we'd like to play. Our matrimony is a total phony. Now we'll take these Pokemon away. And I got a quiz for you, Kellen. What kind of poem is that? Limerick. That's a limerick. Yes. B- nailed it. They whip out a limerick. <laughs> then they jump into the motto. They reveal themselves. Prepare yourself for trouble, kid, and make it doubler than you ever did. Blah, blah, blah. As a giant cake emerges from the ground. Rising on a massive cake, which is one of those, like, what is Team Rocket's budget moments? Yeah. Like, this thing rules. Now, Ash has a, a stupid detective moment during this. When they reveal themselves, he goes, you're no bride and groom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ash. I'll never get tired of those. <laughs> and instead of uh, Meowth, that's right. It's hurry up and cut the cake. And the cake <laughs> opens up to reveal the balloon inside. And they're off. And they even attached just married cans to the so bottom good. of the balloon. <laughs> Which <laughs> so are kind of their demise, too, <laughs> yeah. as we'll see. Shocker. So Meowth screaming, ta-ta, toddlers. The Nidoran needs some time alone. Yeah, and so Misty scolds the kids. It's all their fault. Let their Nidoran love each other. This wouldn't have happened. Yeah, family and uh, Ralph, if it wasn't for their fighting, this never would have happened. And then we see uh, the cans are dropping from the balloon, giving us a very convenient trail directly to Team Rocket. Very convenient. Very convenient. (laughs) So they they solve this whole situation very quickly. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, it's the cans. We followed the cans. It's Team Rocket. (laughs) Team Rocket are on the ground now trying to force the Nidoran into wedding outfits, which I really wish they would have finished because that would have been fucking adorable. Yeah, imagine the Pokemon cards. Oh, God. But the gang comes up on them. They're like, yeah, we followed your cans, bitch. Fuck you. And then Arbok goes. Actual dialogue. Uh, Arbok goes. uh, Nidoran goes for tackle. Knocks Arbok back quickly. Then it's victory bell. Go eats Jesse this time. Not Mm, I like how they're switching it up on us. I think Mm -hmm. it ate Meowth in a previous episode. Yes. Uh, And this is the second time it has ingested a non-James. Oh, actually, it kind of ate Lickitung too. Yeah, it's it's eaten its fair share of. It's getting around Team Rocket. The cast, yeah. Yeah. So uh, scratch and tackle, but Tony gets hurt. They they lunge at it, but oh, Victory no. Bell pins Tony down as Maria goes, knocks Victory Bell off of Tony as the electric guitar gym theme comes in. What a great team. And the kids, Ralph and Emily, finally look at this and realize, oh my God, they're fighting for each other. They love each other. Because remember, things only we make so sense blind. in the Pokemon universe if they're relayed to us through combat metaphors. Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. And so they're being wrapped up by Arbok, and they bite their way out. They scratch up Team Rocket's Pokemon, and and Ralph and Emily finally team up and get both Nidoran going for Fury Swipes, even though Nidoran Male couldn't learn Fury Swipes. He learns Fury Attack, but not Swipes. Unhinges its jaw and swallows whole the two Nidoran. And we think all is over while it is digesting the Nidoran, but then we see the Arbok's eyes in discomfort. The Nidoran are chewing their way out of the Arbok. <laughs> there is blood everywhere. They burst out like a chestburster from Alien and claim their victory. 
Yeah, it was a very strange creative decision <laughs> on the animator's part. Okay, what actually happened? <laughs> uh, they go for a really sick ass double kick. Yeah, it's cool too. It was great. And it. the trainers are like perfectly in sync now. Yeah, they finally kind of realized maybe we should be on the same side. Huh, yeah. What a concept. And so uh, Team Rocket powers up their Pokemon picker upper. It's another vacuum. Classic Team Rocket move. Haven't seen a vacuum in a while. Vacuums and balloons. They're excellent. And then we get another beautiful Pikachu moment. He uh, sticks himself to the entrance of the vacuum with a big tree branch. And we get a good old Pikachu psycho smile as right. he it's, bolts it's the, the shit Luigi out of him. It's the Luigi death stare of yeah. the Pokemon universe. We saw this back in the Butterfree episode, I mm -hmm. believe, when he landed yep. on their helicopter and gave them a, you motherfuckers about to die look. <laughs> That's exactly what he did here. So Misty has star, you go pop the balloon. They go blasting off again. Beautiful, beautiful oh, battle there. Team Rocket lost a double header. And so Misty's not done, though, scolding the children. Trainers need to make their Pokemon happy. What are you two doing? Mm -hmm. And the kid, the kids are like, well, I, I could never say goodbye to my Nidoran. I could never say goodbye to Tony. I could never say goodbye to Maria. As if they don't live right fucking next door to each other. Which Tracy points out. And it's like, really, that was it the whole time. They <laughs> thought that if their Nidorans got together, they'd have to move out. You live <laughs> three feet from each other. <laughs> that is not a problem. And I don't think Nidoran is able, is capable of uh, signing for an apartment on their yeah, own. Yeah, who's going to co-sign that lease? <laughs> yeah, I don't think any bank's going to give you a loan for that one. What a cruel world. They still don't yeah. recognize Nidoran autonomy. <laughs> Nidoran gets a loan. <laughs> Fan art. <laughs> I want that. Tony and Maria the Nidorans look for a mortgage together. <laughs> Go apply for a mortgage. That's so cute. I want that. That's on the Bank. list. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, Tracy gives them the idea. He pitches, hey, you guys live next door to each other. Just put like a little house in the middle for your Nidoran. And you can see him every day. You can be like a family. And both Ralph and Emily together are like, oh, with Ralph? With Emily? It's like, oh, they do like each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, Misty was right the whole time. Hey, when passion burns that bright, it's got to be because of something. And then the Nidoran kiss, and it's adorable. And then, oh, they glow. And they evolve! Boom. Ah! Ah! The big mystery. Have they evolved from the battle or the kiss? Yeah, Tracy's sketching something, and he says that. And then Misty, like, looks at his sketch pad and knocks him out. And we never see what he drew. Something He's like, Tracy, freaky. you you weirdo. Tracy, you creep. It's strange. And stop, so uh, Stop drawing... <laughs> Erotic art for your Twitch channel, <laughs> which just got allowed as of, nudity. as of yesterday. Don't think... get me started. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, let's not go into that. <laughs> that Good just Lord. A just a joke. Ridiculous. Anyway, so uh, Ash asks, you think people change when they get kissed? And Misty's like, guess we'll have to find out for ourselves. Yeah, she blushes really hard. Weird. <laughs> and Ash goes, uh. Did she just hit on Ash? Yeah, that was very strange. <laughs> That's actually, um, I believe that was just in the dub. Just in the dub, yeah. Yeah. In the Japanese, Misty's like, a kid like you doesn't need to know, even though she's <laughs> the same age as him. Right. But that's more in line with Misty. She's constantly calling him immature and young, even though they're mm -hmm. the same age. Yeah. And so uh, the gang heads back off on their next adventure. We see Team Rocket stuck in the bells of a church. This, this is one of my ring. favorite Team Rocket's in trouble endings, actually. <laughs> Team Rocket's fate. Yeah. Yeah, it's those like big wedding bells of like an old school church and they're like stuck in the bells. <laughs> they go, it's got a familiar ring and then Victory Bell screams. <laughs> yeah, Victory Bell's like happening. consumed one of the bells. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, like gobbled the whole thing. More bell than Victory at this point. Hey oh. And uh, yeah, they're like, all's well that ends well. Ah, and Victory Bell screams as we fade out. And that's the episode. So do I have Romeo to do and Juliet, art. let's move on to the four poor, shall oh, we? Okay, no, 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 it's not. It's <laughs> not Romeo and Juliet, okay? What? It's the book Warm Bodies, which is a satire of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Did you see that movie? There is a movie of it. I do not know anything about it. Oh, Warm Bodies. It's actually funny. I bet you people have various opinions on it, but it is a satire of Romeo and Juliet. It's a post-apocalyptic world, okay? So there's zombies, and 
there is this one zombie named R who falls in love with a human named J and they have to figure out how to work together to realize their love in a society where there are two sides, the zombies and the humans cannot get along. It's funny. Uh, I think Romeo and Juliet's the, the, the better go-to. Yeah, that was that, just cause, that was that was a joke because you just know it, it's it's, it's an adaptation of Romeo. Yeah, it's you just get it? a parody. I just picked yeah, another I, adaptation. You get I got you. It? You get it? Yeah. You get it? Yeah. I, I, yeah, okay. So then I'll go with uh, Nomeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The one with the, one with the garden with gnomes. Baz Luhrmann's 1999 Romeo and Juliet adaptation where they're like American gags. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll go with uh, uh, the Simpsons episode because I'm, I'm sure they probably have done a Romeo and Juliet at some point. Yeah, which well, weird. I can't. Re- I can't think of it either. I can think of other Shakespeare plays they've done, but they had to have done Romeo they and Juliet, to. right? Yeah, and so that's all I have. I don't remember any others. Right now. I'll go with the uh, the Klingons and the Romulans. We can. Move okay, on. let's. Yeah, let's rank. <laughs> let's rank. <laughs> First category will be character of the day. So that would be uh, Emily and Ralph. Two weird, feisty English kids. Yeah, they don't really do a lot for me. Uh, and they kind of suck. They kind of <laughs> suck. They're assholes. They hit each other with sticks. I don't like them. <laughs> but I'm fine with them as a device just to move the episode forward. But I don't like them like them. Yeah, I don't leave this episode thinking, man, I want more of that. I want to find out what happens to Emily and Ralph. I want no, more I of the needle ran. I don't ran. give a shit about Emily and Ralph. Yeah, Tony but- Maria. Or the heroes, but... But Emily and um, Ralph can fuck off. Typically, we use character of the week to refer to the humans, though. The yeah. Pokemon, they'll get the... They, they would be the featured Pokemon. Featured Pokemon, yeah. exactly. So that's, like, 3.3. If... I mean, that that's a good one, right? Slice it in a third. Monty Hall problem. But I'm just gonna go with a two. I'm a one-fifths ride-or-die kind of homie, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so 2.65 for character of the day category number two will be... Sweet sentences. What do we have here? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a few. I don't remember anything, like, particularly good. Well, for one, for the type of sentence that you like, I mean, there is that crazy sort of... uh, Worlds apart one. We could live close together and still live worlds apart. Um, Much too good for that, losers, (laughs) Nidoran. You're too... You're no bride and groom, merry old England. Uh, The narrator finishes the episode. Oh, oh, the limerick. The limerick is really oh good. yeah, that's good. Uh, um, can't find anyone to love me because I'm mean and nasty. That's a good one too. That's a good one. Pair of first prizes in the Pokemon poach off is something the elf says. Jesse's whole thing about her dream of love is pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. Yeah. What good is a trick if it's not dirty? It's not like a favorite sweet sentence one nah. for me. Oh, the narrator at the end just says "all's well that ends well," which is a a good Shakespearean reference. Yeah, it is. It's not even um, original. Well, it's not supposed to be. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Pokemon picker upper. Yeah, these are okay. They're they're yeah, not I think my favorite. Pokemon, but they're okay. I think Pokemon ripped off Shakespeare in this episode. <laughs> I don't think wow. they made up this plot themselves. <laughs> I I also I also this isn't actually this isn't very strong for me. The limerick's the best part. Yeah, I, I'm not going higher than a five. So you're going five? I'm going five. I'm going to do... No, no, no. I'm not going higher than a 5 or equal to it. I'm going 4.9 repeating. Asymptotically approaching 5. I'm just going to put it as 4.9 in the sheet. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to do... Shout out to asymptotes. What a great word. I'm going to do 4.5. I don't think that's a 4. I don't think that's a 5. That's 4.7 for that. Together with 2.65, that is a 3.675 for Wherefore Art Thou Pokemon. Hmm. A weak score for what I thought was actually a pretty good episode. It is a good episode, but it's the kind of episode the four poor would chew up and spit out mm-hmm. because it just doesn't fit, you know? Yeah. Like, what is this wishbone? So let's get on to episode 103. Get along, little Pokemon. This episode kicks ass. Howdy. This is a fine episode, yeah. This is good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> once again, accent on the E, but another error in the title card. Uh-oh. <laughs> They put a comma after little instead of a long. Whoa. Whoa. So it's get along, get little, along little Pokemon, Pokemon <laughs> instead of get along little Pokemon. Wow, that's egregious. Yeah. Get along, little. They. Ruined the whole episode. It's going to be a zero for me on the four part. Thank you. <laughs> 
Join us next week for two more Grammar episodes. in the title card. The punctuation Zero. in the title title card is all that matters. <laughs> the rest <laughs> of the episode pointless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also interesting to note, this episode on like Pokemon.com and stuff is is titled as Git Along Little Pokemon G I T, but the yeah. title card is Get G E T. Yeah, and it's titled Get in in other places. Like mm-hmm. you know, on Bulbapedia it's Get, but yeah, on, on some of the services it's Git. Get. It's kind of weird. Get. Starting the episode, the gang is trekking through a uh, desert landscape still on Mandarin Island on the way yeah, to Tripita. not on Lapras. That's like three episodes in a row. You haven't started on Lapras. That's crazy. Crazy. Well, and they say it's about a three-day journey by <laughs> foot to where <laughs> they're going. So Jesus Christ. There's a town kind of nearby, though. It's going to take them until tomorrow morning, though, to get there. And Ash, Ash and, and Misty are not going to make it. Yeah, Misty also. P- Ash they're and Pikachu fucking are hungry. exhausted. Uh, like usual. When, when's Misty Ash can't not? walk. Yeah. Misty can't walk. Yeah, she's collapsing at this point. When a uh, a storm rolls in, whoa, whoa, it's not Pokemon without more a iconic couple storms. duo than Pokemon yeah. and storms. So they're running through the rain. Misty kind of collapses down, so they go cower under a rock formation. When Pikachu spots a bunch of Magnemite absorbing Ooh. lightning, right? So we've we've met Magnemite before. What episode was that? Grinchy? Uh Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grinchy City. But they're a little metal ball with two magnets attached, and they float. And some screws. Don't forget and the screws. screws. Don't forget the screws, you're right. And an eye. That's how it they, sees. <laughs> they see somehow, yeah. Uh, and then a Jolteon appears. It attracts the Magnemite. Jolteon we've met, too. That's an evolution of Eevee. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting these all right. Well, these, yeah. these are from my day. Uh, but it's like a spiky dog. Yeah, spike dog. As It, it attracts the Magnemite in as a Tauros-drawn carriage rolls up. We've also seen Tauros. Ash has 30 of them. The gang jumps Actually. into the carriage. And who is driving this? Wagon, but John Wayne himself. It's Ethan. He goes, Hop in, pilgrims. <laughs> Literally, he says pilgrims. I know. He's, a, he's gotta be a John Wayne reference. <laughs> Probably. So uh, after the storm, we're on this guy's ranch, I guess, or something. He chases after lightning storms to use his magnemite to absorb the electricity and then takes that electricity to the nearby small towns to give them power. Yeah, which is honestly a cool concept, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but like how much electricity could nine Magnemite like really hold? How long can that power a city for? Well, I don't know. And and I, I was wondering about that too, actually, like because they make this seem very impressive later on in terms of its capacity. And really, it's like since we've never been up against this question before and we probably never will, it's kind of the kind, type of world building they're not. They don't really have to commit to that hard. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, could, fuck it, throw it, it in. It's interesting. Like, it could have been, if Pokemon was something else, <laughs> that's not a Pokemon <laughs> thing to commit to the, the world building beyond no. the creature, right? Yeah, well, but, I mean, there's... Uh, there's God, they could have. There's a million Pokemon. Uh, that's just the sentence. But there's a million Pokemon <laughs> that uh, have dex entries for world building that do not make sense at all. Right, like, Meg right. Cargo is noted to be hotter than the sun. So the world is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hotter than so, who, which sun? <laughs> our sun, assumedly. So Europe's sun from the fantasy books. <laughs> I'm looking through uh, Magnemite and Magneton's dex entries. I'm seeing nothing about the ability to hold on to electricity. Hmm. But it's a neat idea. It, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, Ethan here calls his Magnemite by number. How could he possibly refer to them by name? I'm a Magnemite, not a number. Yeah, he calls them one through nine, but number six, he's a little bit of a troublemaker, ain't he? He's the black sheep. He's got these little bent magnets, and that's how you can tell them apart. Cute. I like it. Now, what's neat is that Jolteon uses electricity to pull them in, right? Like He's the sheep dog. Electromagnetic uh, spectrum. He can create electricity that can attract the Magnemites. And yes, he is exactly that. He is a herding dog, which is very mm-hmm. cool. He's cute. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Ethan also keeps some free range. He's a free range Magnemite. The eggs taste the same, though, I think. <laughs> we'll get them from a local farm, butcher them up nice for you. <laughs> you ever eat Magnemite stew? <laughs> that would, I feel like that would hurt. Oh, it's horrible. Going down, yeah. <laughs> but it's a good source of iron. Mm, yes. So, he, yeah, he explains their free range instead of putting them in a box. Because if I had to send all of them out every time we got to a storm, the storm will be over by then. Right, so he's got to have that, that quick trigger action. He's John Wayne. He's about speed. Fastest Pilgrim, Pokeball in the West. Pilgrim. Yeah, because he doesn't need a Pokeball. 
The, the Magnemite, though, seem very fixated on Pikachu for whatever reason. They, like, pile on him. He gets scared. It was kind of cute. They smother him. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, God, what's that dude to Pikachu? Only his tail is sticking out. And this this is a, d- a stupid detective moment for me. So uh, Pikachu is, like, s- kind of squealing a little bit, covered in Magnemite, like, suffocated. And Ash turns and is like, is something the matter, Pikachu? <laughs> <laughs> Like, look at him. <laughs> Just being suffocated. No Just big deal. Being suffocated. So yeah, Ash goes to try and save Pikachu. The Magnemite bolt him, and then they scatter. No real explanation as to exactly what happened here, specifically, other than they were attracted to electricity or something. But Pikachu wasn't discharging anything. No, they just sense his yeah. innate stuff. And so they're all off again. Uh, seemingly, Ash is telling Ethan about his plans to go to the Orange League and and Ethan's like, well, I can't get you to Trollvita because we can't swim in this thing, but I can get you to the next town. And she's like, hey, that's where we're going. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, Ethan gives the reins to Ash here. He's like, hey, oh, and, you and drive and the this carriage. part going across the desert in that wagon, sweet country music. Not country music, sorry. Sweet, like, Western music kicked in, like, banjos and Spanish guitar. I thought it was a nice background touch. Yeah, this reminded me... When he gave it to Ash and he wasn't driving very well, it reminded me of that scene in the, uh, I believe, two thousand the 2003 Cat in the Hat movie starring Mike Myers. Okay. When they're in Cat's car and he has multiple steering wheels. Okay. And he gives the steering wheel to Conrad, the child, to drive the car. And he says, uh, there's a little voice inside of me saying, this is a bad idea but i can barely hear that little voice because an even louder little voice is screaming let the 12 year old drive <laughs> why do i like that joke that's a dumb joke but i like it <laughs> i love that movie so much i don't think i've seen it actually oh it's a classic it's literally the it's reason the Seuss estate will not allow any more live action Seuss adaptations <laughs> and that makes it good in your eyes <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> He calls, the cat calls something a dirty hoe. Oh my God, like it's unhinged. Yeah, it, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a it's a dirty hoe. It's a gardening tool. Oh. <laughs> but he calls it a dirty hoe and throws it to the ground and picks it back up and he goes, I'm sorry, baby, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so That's good. It's like a stoner cartoon kind of joke. <laughs> There's a centerfold joke. It's so funny. Holy it is the craziest thing ever, and it's so good. Anyway, we'll do that some other time. We'll cover that movie in the future. We will. <laughs> add, it, add it to the list. It We've actually got Scooby-Doo, chronologically SpongeBob. comes up after Pokemon 2000, but before Pokemon the third <laughs> movie. Uh, there's like a multiverse kind of thing, and that's when Cat in the Hat happens. If the, if the gang ever makes a Dr. Seuss reference, we're hitting Cat in the Hat. We're oh going for God. it. Oh, my God. Okay. Shout us out in the comments if you want us to talk about Cat in the Hat. <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody would. But. It's so good. It's so funny. Oh, man. Okay, but you have to never watch it just in case we do we do it for the podcast. You so know what, Kellen? I think I can do that. <laughs> like it's been can, 20 years. I, I think, think you can I go can a couple handle more. that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so back to the carriage. Uh, another storm is rolling in. So uh, the Magnum might absorb the lightning. It's a quick scene. Next day, though, it's lunchtime around the fire. And as is tradition, Team Rocket's spying in. It was literally at the start of this scene. I was like, this seems like a Team Rocket spying kind of scene. And then it was. (laughs) And then it was. Yeah, we get some fun jokes here. It's a real power posse. And they want to bring all these Pokemon back to the boss. We're going to make currency out of their current is what they decide, though. They kind of pivot. Okay, on the way, let's not take it back to the boss. Let's uh, charge for a charge. They're like, they're going to steal the electricity and and, and basically opt this guy's business. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm going to sell know. the electricity before yeah. they can uh, before they take the Magnemite to the boss. But we see in the carriage, Ethan's on the phone. He has a full video phone in this carriage. There's been a blackout. It's got in, an assuming- iPhone 11 <laughs> assuming 13, in the next uh, town where we're headed already uh they're running it on the backup magnemite but the call cuts the magnemite are all out of energy and then the magnemite flow off ethan's magnemite and we get ethan saying literally word for word this is a quote from a pokemon episode mm-hmm. what in tarnation is going on <laughs> beautiful thank you so good i'll take my oscar now yeah well they come by mail these days 
Oh, good. I don't have to go anywhere. Sweet. Nope, nope. Just delivered. Nice, nice, uh, nice, nice. So the balloon is rising. Which balloon, you'd ask? The team rocket balloon. What? Pre- prepare for trouble. We're magnetic. Make it double. You're pathetic. Hey, oh, got him. And then they Fucking go into the normal it. chant. Yeah, and they have a giant magnet on the balloon this time. So magnets, all the magnemite. vacuums. What else are they really into? And mechs, I guess. Grabbers. <laughs> they yeah, love grabbers. a grabber. So uh, James tries his grabber on Jolteon and Pikachu. He gets both of them, nails it. Uh, Thundershock doesn't do anything. It's shockproof. Of that, course. They of use course. that a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that happens so much. Like, every other time, it's like, Pikachu, Thunderbolt. And they're like, <laughs> we made this one shockproof. And Ash is like, oh, what? That is the other thing, yeah. So it's vacuums, magnets, everything shockproof. Which, I mean, at least Team Rocket is kind of learning, so. They, they've given up explaining why they're shockproof. Do you remember early mm-hmm. days? They'd kind of be like, this yeah. tank is made entirely out of rubber. And you're like, oh, tank's ground. So I, I don't know if that was necessary. But then, but then they would, uh, now they just don't explain it. Now everything's shockproof. They, they could like have like uh, <laughs> contracted a whale to be fighting, <laughs> like a real life blue whale to be trying to steal Pikachu. I don't know how that would work, but like somehow the blue whale would be shockproof. <laughs> And that would be their whole explanation. Oh, it's a shockproof whale. It's a whale lord with a terror type of ground. <sighs> I hate that he had an actual explanation. I mean, I love <laughs> it. But... <laughs> but I mean, that combination doesn't exist for another like 25 years or something. Baby so. J's time machine. Yeah, there you go. So uh, Jolteon goes for a pin missile, which is a, a very like Jolteon thing. It actually does learn pin missile. And it's like it's go. thematic because of the spikes on him and how yeah, every so deck entry is like doing like spiky. a hedgehog blast. Right? Yeah, exactly. A porcupine technique. Yeah. And so they drop out of the claw. Uh, Jolteon goes for a thunder wave to round up the Magnemite off of the magnet. But Jesse sends out Arbok from the air who thuds to the ground. Poor Arbok. <laughs> Falls and is hurt. Lol. Is I love wrote. Arbok. <laughs> Arbok is great. He's such a well, good Ar- character. Arbok is a jobber. Like he's yeah. the that sort of like sidekick who just like is there to get beat up. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. but I do love when he ate those uh, Nidoran's hole and then got killed. Last episode. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. he's back. And we get lots of good facial expressions. So oh, very it's good. He, he nails the eyes popping out of the head kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Thuds to the Ground goes for a tackle Jolteon takes it head on Misty told Jolteon to get out of the way but Misty is not Jolteon's trainer so he didn't dodge it that's clearly what happened there that's clearly like, how fuck you I'm not gonna listen to you you're not my trainer I'm and gonna Jolteon take this in the face. from the blow flies right into John Wayne boom, boom. and they uh, fly against a rock and Pikachu thunderbolts the balloon Team Rocket go blasting off again alright so Team Rocket's maybe dealt with yeah, they're gone, so they won't come back for sure. Jolteon's for sure. tired. Ethan is all casted up somehow. Where the fuck did that cast come from? Well, from his uh, emergency rations. He can yeah. cast himself? It, he's John Wayne. He can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the first time I busted a limb out here, Pilgrim. Great detective line from Tracy this time. That arm looks pretty hurt, Ethan. <laughs> As it's in a fucking cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And later a sling. <laughs> like, no, Tr- Tracy, no, it's perfectly fine. Look at me, look at me do push-ups, Tracy. Look at all these push-ups I can do. <laughs> <laughs> and so the gang's like, Ethan, you can't go. You're too hurt. Ash needs to take all the Pokemon. As Someone's if, like, gotta do it. Like, they would, all, they, they would all go in the carriage anyway. Like, Ethan needs- they were they were using the carriage all along. <laughs> But yeah. suddenly they were like, no, someone needs to go solo. And like Ethan has a potentially broken arm. He may need medical attention, so he should probably get to the town pretty quick, too. Well, they want to get to the t- Ethan will live. They want to get to the town quicker for all the poor Pokemon mm-hmm. on respirators. There has been a serious illness that has wiped through Mandarin Island. It is actually a flu caused by whatever the hell Prima smokes. <laughs> I was gonna say ironically scurvy. <laughs> Fuck, edit in your joke. And not my <laughs> joke. Your joke's funnier. Because I get it, I get it, because they're citrus islands. Oh yeah, God, I get yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, it only gets better when you explain. How the hell would they so, have scurvy? <laughs> <laughs> they're all just so sick of oranges. Like they, Yeah, they they stop eating them. It's like, <laughs> oh, I have orange sandwiches, I have orange tea, I have orange juice, I have orange everything. I'm so sick of it. <laughs> So yeah, Ash is going to go off on the Tauros with Magnemite 1 through 9 to the town, and he's off. 
run through the wilderness. Yeah, we get like symphonic music this time. Like it was like a pure spaghetti western before, and now it was like a bit like, ooh, yeah, like a big movie soundtrack kind of dude. Yeah, it was just me going. Yeah, it was exactly what you said. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So uh, the Magnemite then suddenly scatter for some reason. Pikachu sends out a little shock to attract the Magnemite back to him. And uh, they all come back. But Pikachu's super pooped now. But one Magnemite is missing. It's it's number six, the one with the, the little bent sheep. magnets. The little troublemaker ah, is missing. six. And so we go to six, and we see him bobbing down the river. It was funny. It was He's cute. like floating by a stream like he wants yeah. to drink a water. Do Magnemites drink water? We don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell magnemites are. Do they have a digestive system? How does a magnemite poop? Does it poop? Does it poop? You know, we'll like know. Uh, grasshoppers don't really pee. Well, they pee, but it's like their uric acid has very little water in it. That's why it's just like a, a solid. They like pee a solid crystal. Uh, I'm thinking magnemites do something like that. They're like, they're the, they're the grasshoppers of the uh, magnetic Pokemon. You're telling me that Magnemite passes kidney stones on the regular? Every day. Ooh, yeah. Shout no, out to you. Magnemite's true heroes. Yeah. Well, and grasshoppers, but uh, that's also not true because I don't think grasshoppers have kidneys exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit about grasshoppers. What am I saying? Yeah, do we know how they smell? We never figured that one out. No. Anyone smelled a bug since last episode? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Ash grabs Six, starts pulling him back. Uh, no, sorry, Six starts pulling Ash along. He's attracted to something. We're back to Team Rocket being attracted. Oh, they're not Magnemite's gone. attracted to, to Team Rocket. They've got an electromagnetic machine with static electricity. It's portable and environmentally friendly and mm. great for the scalp. They're all, yeah, they're, they got to rub their hair to generate the static electricity. That powers it. I do love their little chant here. They're... Uh, Second chant, I guess. Prepare mm-hmm. for trouble once more. Make it double. It's our encore. And then Meowth cuts him off and goes, you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. So back to Tauros. Uh, Ash is running back to Tauros with uh, with six. He tells Pikachu to run. Take all the Magnemite. Get out of here. Mm. Pikachu doesn't do that. He just stands there. It's like, <laughs> what? Did you say something? I'm I'm really busy here, Ash, trying to do the same thing over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do the New York Times crossword. Thank you very much, Ash. And it's a Sunday, so it's super hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a streak. You can't break this. <laughs> I need my first perfect week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Team Rocket gets all the other eight Magnemite. Pikachu can't even bolt. He's got nothing left in him. He's got no more energy. He tries one more time. To empty his tank. He lets out a big one. It attracts the Magnemite back to him. But Team Rocket are still using the static machine. It's static versus Pikachu. Oh, the Ba-ba-ba. ultimate showdown. And Six sees what's going on here. He gets in the middle of the blast. And then kaboom! Ooh, explosion. It attracts all the Magnemite back in. They start circling around Six like a cult of Magnemite. Yeah, like a religious he starts chant. To glow. And for the second episode in a row, we get an evolution. Magnemite evolves. Six has evolved. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Now, interesting here, y- you know, some some might think some lesser Pokemon people, not myself, might think that three Magnemites come together to evolve into a Magneton. Since a Magneton looks like it's effectively three Magnemites, that is not the case. It actually it just like grows more Magnemites when it evolves. I mean, the Magneton's deck century from Red and Blue says, formed by several Magnemites linked together. But that doesn't happen here. Not here. Yeah. I mean, the show and the games contradicting each other? But just in decks in the game, yeah, it's still just a single Magnemite that evolves, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very confusing. So, it's like is that how the game works? Kinda. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of Magneton's deck entries are like, or here, here's Emerald. It literally verbatim says, it is actually three Magnemite linked by magnetism. Hmm. Huh. So. So it, like, doesn't really evolve. It just, like, gets no. really c- close roommates. It's like Diglett. <laughs> they, just, they just find a couple friends and they're like, hey. And move in together. <laughs> we're a new Pokemon. Hell yeah. You want to make a squad. <laughs> but uh, in in the decks, when Ash is dexing Magneton, we can see that it's um it's got, like, the little bent magnets. Like, it's... The picture of Magneton is six for some reason. 
That is interesting. Which reminds me of the last episode. I didn't bring it up. But when Ash dexes Nidorino and Nidorina, it's just stills of Tony and Maria in the decks instead of their official. <laughs> yeah, kind of like here. Yeah. So they just didn't want to. They didn't want to go in the archives, find that PNG of the Pokemon art to put in. It, it was it's like, a fuck nice it, just crop this maybe one this out. This Dex is actually taking their picture. We have never seen that before. But maybe it does now. It's always we haven't seen it updated. Ash is the type of guy who would not use a feature. Yeah, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> anyway, it's stupid. Uh, so yeah, we have a Magneton now. Well, we've seen this thing before too. It's three fucking Magnemite, mm-hmm. and so it uh, it uh, bah, 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 they recharge Pikachu. Well, yeah, this this uh, ecstatic evolution, I guess, has created energy somehow. I don't know. They're like repowered up, like they were hit in the blast too. Number six. So they then use some of that power to power uh, Pikachu. So Pikachu's healthy again. Team Rocket is still rubbing, right? <laughs> they're, they're trying to make all the static mm-hmm. electricity to the point that they start getting smoke from the, the yeah. fiction, like little, <laughs> little fires themselves. pop up. And so T, uh, so they all Thunderbolt, all the electric Pokemon, they Thunderbolt, Team Rocket, they go blasting off twice. That ain't so nice. Ah, here wah, we go. Wah. And so Sunset. finally we arrive we at the town. We have reached the town. A little bit later at night, Tracy and Misty catch up with John Wayne. And, and look at this. The whole town is powered. Hey, it's all been saved. And the next day, uh, Joy and Jenny thank Ash for, for helping out. And Great job. Ethan asks Ash if he wants to, wants to be partners, eh? But Ethan Ash has dreams. John Wayne are the same person. If you haven't noticed, I've been saying John Wayne. That's the same person. <laughs> But Ash has dreams. He can't just leave. He can't settle down and get a job. Yeah, he's on this random by the, island. The request, but he has to. He has to keep moving. He has to beat the Orange League and then see where his dreams take him. And so Ethan says goodbye, amigo, and they're off back to Trevita. And that's Dang, the episode. It's the road. All right, literary hour. Uh, for a bit, I was trying to find something that's like a, a storm chasing kind of story. Cause it, so it was making me think of Twister, that movie, right? About like storm chasing. Because that is kind of what, what this episode is about, is Ethan is a, a storm chaser. But with that whole like ranching kind of thing going mm-hmm. on. But since I couldn't really nail that down to a book, I'm going with a, a movie that is based off of a short story. 1939 Stagecoach. Which is a John Wayne movie. I did it, everyone. Oh, I think uh, I've seen that. <laughs> You've seen that? Yeah, I think I saw in it in school? In, uh, in school, yeah. That would make sense. I think that is a, a movie that's studied, yeah. It's a film 100 thing. Yeah, I, absolutely it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So um, I believe it's about this like journey of a stagecoach across like a, a long trek uh, that's filled with all kinds of like outlaws and various threats. And the people on the stagecoach are, are very eclectic, right? And one of them, uh, John Wayne's character is like an ex-con or something like that, who they're really like scared of at first, but then he like ends up saving the day and that whole thing. But it was that like, oh, we need to get here. And like, there's going to be adversity along the way. And I think it's the most like iconic of his movies, like of his Western movies. Mm -hmm. Of course, his most iconic movie is when he plays Genghis Khan very racistly. (laughs) And it puts on a bad accent and that whole thing. Did you know that that's a real movie? I did not, actually. Oh, look it up. Yeah, he plays Kangas Khan in a movie, and they try to make him look Asian, and it would uh, it is so offensive. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> back that then? Is, yep. That is just... That was, uh, yeah, less sensitive back then. Uh, the movie's called The Conqueror from 1956. It stars mm. John Wayne as the Mongolian conqueror Genghis <laughs> Khan. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Wild shit. Oh, it is wild. The 1900s were a wild time. All of them. Lawless time. <laughs> yeah, every single one. Yeah, this is from the 50s. Um, all right. I think we can get to ranking the episode. Four point right, on plastic ping, ping, ping pong picture of objective rankings. We're going to put two categories and rank. First category will be the jelly donut effect. That's the dub edits. How many were there? I don't think there were that many. Uh, there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't any. So what, it just gets a zero? <laughs> they added Pikachu's jukebox, and that's it. Well, either we repull or it gets a zero. Well, I mean, Pikachu's jukebox is a dub edition, so there is something. I think that's a one. Ah, uh, going a zero. This is doing but it nothing exists. For me. It's you doing do nothing like, for me. You could do like point one. <laughs> well, no, like I did the point nine. This is like a 0.0, and then there's a one somewhere very far. 
It's asymptotically approaching zero. <laughs> okay, zero, fine, whatever. <laughs> Category two. Oh, I said zero point zero 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 zero. And eventually I'm not one. writing all of those in the spreadsheet. Uh, the cell okay. is only so big. Okay. So it says point five for that. Category two is Tracy's bullshit. Oh. Why are we pulling these shitty ones? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a lot of bullshit this time. It's not, they're not very Tracy ish. Like he had... well, he's like, Ethan, your arm looks hurt. Well, it's in a that, cast. Yeah, we'll count that. We'll count that. He doesn't have any like facts it's not a big Tracy that he's episode. Out. No. And no like creepy drawings, right? Mm-hmm. Uh he, he needs to be smug and point out that the Magnemite are absorbing lightning when everyone can see that's happening. I honestly, watching that, I wasn't sure if the Magnemite were absorbing it or releasing it. No, oh, so he was being useful. <laughs> yeah, oh, until he was like, they're absorbing it. I was like, oh, okay, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, never mind, not bullshit. Helpful. <laughs> yeah, it. there's not much. It's <laughs> That sucks. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, two. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to say 2.2. Oh, this is bad. That's a 2.1. Oh with, my goodness! With jelly donut effect, that is a uh, one point three. Oh my get goodness! Get along, the little four Pokemon. Poor, poor as shit all over this episode. Fickle bitch today. Get along, little Pokemon. Rough, We've seen rough better episode. days. Well, hopefully next week will be better. You want to know what we're doing next week? I'm sure it will. Let's hear it. Next week we're looking at episode one hundred and four, the mystery menace, or in Japanese. Monster in the sewers! Exclamation mark, oh, question mark. Oh, monster in the sewers. Nice. Followed by episode 105, Misty meets her match. Or in Japanese, Yuzu Jim! Exclamation mark. Type battle, three verse three! Double exclamation mark. Hey, Kellen, do you know what Yuzu is? Nope. Is it an orange? It's a lemon. <laughs> <gasps> it's, no, it's not exactly a lemon. It's like, it's a, it's another fruit that's very similar to a lemon. And it's kind of like, you know how like in like hipster restaurants and trendy food, there'll be like a new superfood that suddenly popped up that you've never heard of before, mm-hmm. but now you'll see everywhere. That's going to be Yuzu. <laughs> <laughs> I have started seeing it in menus all the time and you're like, uh, it, no offense, but it kind of tastes like a uh, lemon Lysol. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> how do you know what that tastes lemon. like? Lemon. It tastes like how the lemon Lysol smells. Okay. <laughs> you want to know what Trevita is? Oh yeah. What is it? Uh, an apartment complex in Temp, Arizona. Well, that doesn't work. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's hey, also hey, an orange. It's also have, an orange. They have lemons in Arizona. That could be named <laughs> after that. Oh, it's it's an orange. Yeah. It's also a sweet orange, yes. Ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and that's next week. Join us for that. Heck yeah. And that will come out on uh, New Year's Day. New Year's right? Day. Yep. Yeah. So that'll be fun. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. You can leave comments on the YouTube video. We have them on Hydra Leech YouTube channel. You can listen to us wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. You can reach us at 2 kill a daily at gmail.com. We also have a Twitter with the same handle. Kellen runs a TikTok called Hydra Indeed. Leeches, where he posts fun errors that happen across this Pokemon journey. Uh, intro Natural Music is 80 Synthwave by Alexi Action. Uh, I've been Graham, the guy who talks. Kellen's been Kellen. He talks too. <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah, that's how a podcast typically works. If if only one of us talked, would it be a conversation? Probably not. It, it would just be boring podcast. Challenge accepted. I will do a podcast by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can do it. I mean, people do that, but like, yeah. Yeah, you can do that about some other anime you watch. No, no, I never do that. that. I don't okay, understand. see ya.